Hi everyone and welcome in this new video. In this video I will present you one of the best machine learning based trading strategy from the AlphaCon program. In two words, the AlphaCon program is a program that will help you to create your own trading strategies factory. There are several hours of video for the learning. There are also different templates for the robustness test, the backtesting, the live trading, the work forward optimization, and many other things. And there is also a private community that will help you for your project. So right now, there is a 60% discount on this program. So I put the link in the description. But now let's talk about the strategy. The strategy that we will use is a very simple machine learning model. It is a decision three classifier because it's not mandatory to make something difficult and complex to have good results in trading. The tree classifier has several advantages. It is an understandable algorithm because you have several things like the features importance that you can extract, you have the graph that you can plot. So it's very something understandable. You know which features has the most important impact so you understand the model. Instead of with neural networks or reinforcement learning, that are very complex and deep model. So before explaining the trading strategy itself, I will explain you how a tree classifier works and also how the PCA, principal component analysis and the standard scalar method work because we'll use this free algorithm in our trading strategy. So we need to be aware about how they work and why we use them. So. First of all, let's talk about the decision tree classifier. I have put just a representation of the graph made by a decision tree classifier. So the advantage there is that we can understand what it does. Generally, when you code it, you will not plot that, but it can be very interesting to extract it to really understand the features importance and the structure of this tree. So let me give you a simple example. Let's imagine that the block one is the question, is it cold outside? If it's yes, we go to the left. If it's no, we go to the right. If we are there, for example, we can ask another question. It is raining outside. If it's yes, we go to the left. If it's no, we go to the right. So now I know that it is raining. I know that it is not cold. But now the last question that we can ask is, is it windy outside? So if the answer is yes, maybe I should not take an umbrella. And if it's no, maybe I should take an umbrella. So that's the output, the possible output of this three. But for us, we'll have three possibilities. The first one, we take a buy position. The second one, we do nothing. And the third one, we take a sell position. We short the market, so we bet to the decrease of the price. So now let's talk about the PCA, Principal Component Analysis. This algorithm is very, very important. It is there to transform our input because the most important part in machine learning is not the model because it's very, very simple to do a model in machine learning. But the most important part is to understand how to extract the data and to pre-process them. And one very interesting method that we can use is the PCA. This method will allow us to take a set of features and extract the information, the most information possible in less features. For example, if I have 10 features, I will try to take only three features with 99% of the information from the 10 features, okay? The goal is what? The goal is to have the less features as possible because the more features you have, the more the odds to have an overfitting problem increase. And the PCA is a very good algorithm to reduce the dimensionality of our features. And visually, it's very, very impressive because as we can see there, first we have a three-dimensional graph, the original space. So this is just an example from a Medium article. And as you can see, the third axis is not so much important, okay? And as we can see, the axis one and two are not optimal to explain this observation. And it's quite normal because with the original space, you will never have the best possible space, okay? So once you have 
apply a PCA, but you can apply many other algorithms. As we can see, we have created a two-dimensional space. So first of all, we reduce the number of features, so it's very important. And in the other way, as we can see, we have changed also the axis. And now it's much more easier for our algorithm to find the distance between several points. So that was for the PCA. But before making a PCA, it's mandatory to apply a standard scanner method. We need to standardize the data because the PCA is a geometrical algorithm. And when you work with a geometrical algorithm, you need absolutely to standardize the data. I will use the standard scanner. So it's a normalization, but you can use the min max scanner. You can use really whatever you want, but I want to use the standard scanner because it's one of the most used transformation. But why should we do that? Let me give you an example. Imagine that you have the price of the Euro USD around 1, 120, for example, and you have the daily volume around 16 million. The algorithm will have a lot of problem to adjust its weight with two features that are not on the same scale. So we will remove the average, we will divide by the standard deviation, and as we can see there on the screen, you can take several features that are not in the same scale, but with the standard scalar method, you will put all these different features on the same scale. Then it will be much easier for the algorithm to find the best solution for our problem. Now let's talk about the strategy itself, showing a little bit of the code. The code will not be available for the only reason that it comes from the AlphaCron program. And the other reason is that you can't use this class if you have not the backtesting framework, the work for our optimization framework, the live trading templates, etc. So in other words, you can do nothing if you are not in the AlphaCron program with this code. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the features that we will use. As we can see, we have moving averages, RSI, previous return, stochastic RSI, Ishimoku, Kondal information. So it's a lot of features and many of them are correlated. So the problem is that if you put features that are too much correlated in the model, you will have a problem. And that's why we will apply a PCA to remove all the correlation, all the multicollinearity, and to give proper data to our algorithm. So the second thing is that why I have chosen all these features. If you are not comfortable with that, I recommend you to follow my playlist, One Week, One Bot. I will explain you how to choose the different features, why, and many other things. But to make things simple there, I have chosen to take several features about short-term movement, long-term movement, and volatility. Then the PCA will take all the information from these features. But now we have nearly all the information. The problem is that we don't know the target. The target is very simple. We will take all the returns of the train set and we will order them. It means that if we are below the 33 centile, we are in a selling position. If we are between the 33 and the 67 until we are in the old position. And if we are above, we are in the buying position. And obviously I did a shift to be sure that with the past features, I will predict the future target and not the opposite because it's very frequent when you check a video on YouTube, a medium article that this person predict the past using the future. And that's really what we don't want to do because if we do that, we'll lose money when we'll put that in live trading. Once we have trained our algorithm, we'll make some predictions. If it's minus one, we will take a sell position. If it's zero, we'll not take any position. And if it's one, we'll take a buy position. The question now is when should I exit my trade? And the answer comes from the work for our optimization. My choice was to use a take profit and a stop loss with fixed thresholds and the work for our optimization will optimize these two thresholds. I will not enter into the detail of the work for our optimization, but in two words, it is a method that will help you to optimize your parameters without 
overfitting your model. And then after that, I have applied a robustness test. It is really mandatory to do that because as you may know, a lot of backtests are overfit, even if you are not aware of that. And the robustness test will allow you to say, okay, this trading strategy is overfit or this trading strategy is not overfit. If your trading strategy is overfit, it is really risky to put it in live trading. So that's why it's so important to use this robustness test. But for all those of you who are really interested by that, I have a complete chapter and a template ready to use for your own project in the AlphaQuant program. So we'll just pass very quickly this section. And so now the last thing that we have to do is to show the results. As we can see there, we have interesting returns because over the period around five years, we have 150% of returns with a 35% of drawdown. But again, the goal is not to have a 2% drawdown strategy. The goal is to have very good return with maximum 20, 25% of drawdown. So this strategy is a little bit too risky for me. And after that, once I have several trading strategies with an acceptable risk, I will combine them with a portfolio that will help us to stabilize the return, reducing the risk. And at the end, you can have like 200% of return with 5% of drawdown over the period. So that's the power of diversification. So here we can see that we have very interesting metrics, but it will be better if I plot the graph. As you can see there, the backtest, it's not so good, but it's quite interesting. First of all, after the COVID crisis, when market conditions have changed, we can see an increase in the drawdown. But at the beginning of 2022, we can see that this algorithm is now profitable again, but we can't put it in live trading now. We should apply a robustness test to be sure that we have interesting results and robust results. And if I run the robustness test for this trading strategy, we can see that the probability of overfitting is a little bit too high, okay? Above 10%, I don't think that it's very good to put it in live trading. But if it's your first put, you can put it in paper trading just to see how to do it and just to be more comfortable for the next algorithm. The advantage of the robustness test is that we don't have to wait three months, six months, one year in paper trading to understand that the strategy is not so robust. The robustness test will tell us directly during the backtest period on the historical data. And that's a huge advantage. And the other advantage is that we had an interesting returns. So we could say it's a very interesting trading strategy, but we can't say just using the backtest and the rogue fraud optimization that this trading strategy is not so robust. So that's why it's mandatory to do a robustness test. So I hope you like this video. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments if you have a subject that you want that I abort and see you soon in the next video.